Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. Today we are commemorating one of the most tragic, one of the most painful, one of the most outrageous events in all of history, and yet a huge paradox. Here is the Saviour of the world, the Son of God, whipped, stripped, nailed to the cross and insulted. This is the ultimate cost to God of coming amongst us. He showed his love for us, giving for us the ultimate sacrifice. And because of this cost, we must stay and watch today. But we belong here waiting and watching in this commemoration, not just because Christ died for us, but also because we have helped to crucify him. It is the sinfulness of our humanity, our sin and our turning from God, which brings about this crucifixion. Behold the truth. God's messenger, his son, sent into the world with his message and his example of love and pardon and peace, showing to humanity the truest and holiest and highest form of human life that humanity has ever known. And the only answer that man can give is to put him to the cruelest and most painful death that has ever been devised. Man tells God that he does not want him. And in many ways we still do the same. This is what sin is about the cruel and insulting rejection of God and of his rightful claims upon the gratitude and service of all humanity. And it happens all the time when we ruin our family lives, when we support wars, when we live in injustice, when there's imbalances in society, when we encourage hatred, when we live in hatred. In so many ways, we are part of the sin that divides, the sin that crucifies. But our sin is all the greater because we reject not just our Creator and King, but we reject our loving Father who loves us eternally. He has given himself to us and he loves us all the time despite it all. So our rejection is even more powerful, even more hurtful. Surely every sin of ours stabs right into the heart of God who loves us, just as surely as the nail drives through flesh and bone. And in the midst of that agony, that rejection of our humanity against God, Jesus cries, Father, forgive them. For they know not what they do. It was once pointed out to me by a nun that Jesus did not say, I forgive them, but rather, Father, forgive them. Is it remotely possible that at this one moment, this of the extreme pain and reality of rejection was so great? that he could not at that moment personally forgive, but knew that his father could and would. He wanted to forgive us, and he did. And that is how much he loved us, even in the midst of such horror. For all the sins of our lives, Jesus being nailed to the cross, by those sins, cries, Father, forgive them. This is not a grudging forgiveness. It's uttered from the depths of his wounded heart, even while we are still engrossed in our sin. This is the love which offers hope and reconciliation in a divided and troubled world, and it's the love which we are called to emulate, even though it is sacrificial and it's a struggle and it's costly. 
This is the love in the midst of pain and struggle, which offers the hope of transformation of new life and of light. And so a short prayer. Almighty and everlasting God, who is always more ready to hear than we are to pray, and always ready to give more than either we desire or deserve. Pour down upon us the abundance of your mercy, forgiving us those things of which our conscience is afraid, and granting us those things which we are not worthy to ask, but through the merits and mediation of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen.